Hi church, today is St. Patrick's Day. You know, we're all supposed to wear green and, you know, watch parades or something, be a part of that. I remember as a kid, the only thing I remember about St. Patrick's Day was make sure I wore green so I wouldn't get pinched, you know? How about you? What do you know about this day? Or what do we know about this guy, Patrick? Well, I thought today maybe we'll just have a conversation uh, about Patrick. So I, I did some research and I wanted to share some of that with you. Patrick was born into a wealthy family. So he uh, started life as a rich guy and he was actually born in England. Uh, a lot of uh, misconception about him being Irish. Well, he was English. Uh, his dad was a deacon in the church, but uh, it, in all his writings and writings about him, it doesn't seem like he was particularly religious as a, a growing up. So that's, that, that's another fact. Um, but he didn't really have a faith of his own, per se, as well. No, no history of him uh, gleaning a, a faith from his family. Perhaps he did, but we're not sure about that. But the thing that marked his his life in a big way was when he was 16, Irish raiders came down from Ireland all the way into where he lived in England and kidnapped him. They were in search of people who had money and, and, and his family did. So they took him as kind of booty and, and took him all the way back to Ireland. And it was here that he discovered his faith under his uh, master's hand or whatever. Um, and he was there for six years and escaped after six years of confinement and really slavery and made his way all the way back home. Interesting tale. <laughs> but as he was there at home trying to figure out what he was going to do in life, he studied and after 15 years became a priest. He wasn't quite sure what he was going to do with that. And one day he kind of had a a dream of sorts, a vision. And in this vision, this dream, he felt like the Irish people were calling out to him, saying, come back to Ireland and tell us about Jesus. Can you imagine this dream? This is what uh, vision he had. And so it was at that point he was convinced that that was his mission in life. And he made it a two-pronged kind of a thought. First, he would go to Ireland and, and uh, minister to those Christians who were already there. So he didn't necessarily bring Christianity to Ireland, as some say. But he was going to minister to the Christians who were already there and then begin to convert the Irish people to Christ. That sounds like a great mission. So off he went. He said in one of his writings that he was thankful to his maker for having chosen him as the instrument whereby multitudes would have worshipped idols and unclean things, but had become the people of God. That's an awesome word from him. A couple of things we do know about this man, but uh, a lot of legends, but the things we do know about him was that he was a devout and humble man. He listened to his call uh, from the Lord and followed Um and when he would meet the people in Ireland, he would use their traditions, you want to say against them, but he would know their traditions and, and those rituals that they would have, and he would incorporate that into the message of Christ. I think that's interesting. For example, the bonfire was used as a way to introduce Easter. They would use the bonfire traditionally, the, the Celts and the uh, Irish people, they would use it for uh, sacrifices and honoring the fire gods and different gods that they believed in. So what St. Patrick, Patrick did, he just used it to his advantage and told him, told him about the one true God. I think that's awesome. And, and instead of eradicating their traditions and, and putting down their rituals, he met them where they were at. That is a great lesson for us today. Meeting people where they're at. When we're talking to people about the Lord, and we want to share Christ with them, are we willing to meet them where they're at? Man, that's a good word. Many legends have followed Patrick, 
snake charming and miracles of him raising people from the dead. And I, I don't know if those are true or not. But, but the one that intrigues me the most is his use of the shamrock and, and the, the, the example he would use about this three-pronged little plant was that this is his explanation of the Trinity. And so he would use the shamrock as a symbol of uh, how to explain God. And, and so the three-leaf clover would be his way to do that. And this was important for them because they struggled with polygamy. And so he told them about the one true God and used one of these natural forms of nature for them. Isn't that cool? So as you see uh, the symbol and we see the red, or excuse me, the green rivers and the hats and all this carry on about the Irish culture. Remember who St. Patrick was and his devotion to Christ around, even around those traditions that they had so that he can um, tell them about the one true God. Thanks, church. We'll uh, talk to you again real soon. Have a great St. Patrick's Day.